How's it going, Thunderbirds? It is week three, and we've got the Broncos on the road at Mile High Stadium. Before we get into that, though, we've got to do a little bit of negotiating here. And Gary on Conley, one of our corners, 81 overall at only 25. With that 91 speed, we're going to try to keep him signed, although he's a little bit expensive. But he's a normal depth trait right now, but this upcoming game, we have a chance to get him to a star dev trait. We have a huge amount of cap space, so I'm fine just offering him this uh, 5.7 mil a year with the $2.82 million bonus. And how does he feel about that? He likes it, but it needs more work. Okay. Well, I guess over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be bumping that up to see if we can't get him to sign. Quentin Dunbar, another one of our corners, is also willing to negotiate, but I'm going to be a little bit more strict with him. Only 77 overall, normal dev trait, and he's 28. And you guys know I'm not a huge fan of older players on my team. So we're just going to offer him the base $4 million offer. And he doesn't like it. We are going to maybe give him a little bit more, but I'm not going to get too crazy. It's time to start doing a little bit of scouting. And as a quick look at what we have, maybe we look for a little bit more on the offensive line. We definitely are going to want to see if we can find a good wide receiver. And depending on what happens with Conley this week, we might be looking for two new corners, but we at least we want one. Maybe that right end and maybe the left outside linebacker as well. We've got a lot of stars on the roster, but we don't really have any superstars. So hopefully that's something that we can find. And we'll start taking a look at some of these top-rated players. Not a huge fan of Tony Cordova, but he could be great. That A-minus deep route uh, on a deep throat receiver could be nice. And Gabe Patterson has some stats to look nice as well. Solid A's across the board on the stats we can see, and he's six foot six. That's a lot of height. We also find some first-round talent at center and left tackle. And Tony Meyer, let me look at this again. Early first round talent, supposedly. Only 21, which is nice. Uh, I'm liking that. A minus on the impact plus and B pluses on the run block finesse and the pass block finesse. So that could be nice. In a quick look, right now we're sitting at two first round picks. A 7th and a 26th. Obviously, that was a change. And then a 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Uh, but we might be trying to trade up for another first rounder and just try to get crazy on picking up some stars here. And Gary on again, feeling like he's ready to make a little move. What do we need to do? Hold the Broncos to less than 200 passing yards or get Gary on an interception um, or a first fumble, a tackle for loss or a sack. Honestly, compared to a lot of different um, game day goals that I've seen, this one seems pretty attainable. With our training done, we get upgrades to our right tackles and our middle linebacker in Don Walsh. And with everything done, we'll hop on the plane and head over to Denver. At over 5,000 feet of elevation, we're now in Denver. And what's kind of crazy to me, the Broncos sitting in 81 overall have Antonio Brown as a wide receiver on the team. So we've been doing well in creating turnovers and getting interceptions, but this is going to be definitely a challenge today. Starting 3-0 would certainly be an accomplishment for this team. I think we have a decent chance to do it, but we need to just get off to a good start here on defense, I think. First play of the game. And Denver is going to go play action. Oh, that's a deep man. Is that AB? It is. Ball was almost caught. It's going to be end up being incomplete, though. Wouldn't be surprised to see a run here on second down. They do hand it off. And we just missed an easy tackle. Are they gonna get the first down? It's third and inches. We're gonna we're gonna bring the house here. It is a run. They hand it off to the fullback, and the Broncos pick up a first down there. So we won't see a three and out. But we're gonna be looking okay. There's another broken tackle, and there's a decent run stop on that first down. Denver handing it off again there. Trevathan's there to get the first hit, but not before Lindsay picks up another eight yards. So far, the uh, Broncos are doing a great job of running at us. I don't know what they're doing throwing there, though. It's second down, and I could see them going to the air again here. 
It is a play action. I didn't buy it. Oh, I had a chance to get to that one. I just didn't react in time. Tyrod Taylor is the coach of this Broncos team, and he has a great pass on that one. They hand it off and don't get too much on that first down, though. And as a Ducks fan, every time I have to make a, a former Ducks player have a bad play, I feel kind of bad. But that time, Royce Freeman not getting too much. Tyrod Taylor takes off there. I was not expecting the scramble, and it's a first and goal. So from the nine, we're going to see a snap, and that's probably on me. Very quick, seemingly easy touchdown for the Broncos. Well, as a team, I'm not sure what we're going to do to keep the Broncos from getting uh, 200 pass yards. But maybe we can just continue to try and at the very least win the game. Try to give LeBlanc the ball here on a little pitch. There is a flag down. This is probably going to be a holding. So now second and 16. We're going to try a little read option. Bass fumbles the ball. We're lucky to pick it back up. On the option, Bass apparently injures his leg. And we don't know what the problem is yet. So it's going to be Nathan Peterman. Now in trying to throw this one on third down. Well, let's we'll see if anything good can happen here. Big third and 17. Trying to get a pass. Oh, man. Ty Williams was open, but it was not a great route ran and not a great throw. So fourth and 17. Bass has a pulled groin and is out for the game. So we're stuck with Nathan Peterman for the rest of this competition. This will certainly be difficult and... I'm not a huge fan. The Broncos go into a play action. Trevathan's there to get the tackle. And man, they're moving the ball way too easily. Oh my gosh, I just whiffed on that one. They're going to go to the air. I left my zone completely to try and get the stuff. And that's not going to work out. Well, we're just going to try to keep these guys from passing at this point. Taylor... Is going to take off, and we'll get the sack on that one. Trying to bring Conley on some blitzes here. I'm not too upset with them running to start this second quarter. And on first and goal, this is going to be a play action. I left my zone again. And we'll give up an A-B touchdown. It's a tough spot to be, but we're going to be relying on the rookie running back, John LeBlanc. He breaks one tackle, and that's a quick first down for him. And the less we have to pass with Peterman, the better. There's another hole for LeBlanc. Nice juke, and LeBlanc's gone. What a move. And the rookie goes for six. Gets us on the board here in the second quarter, and we're going to need a lot more of that. 53 yards for the touchdown. Well, it seems that as quickly as it was 14-0, it's now 14-7. We gave up decent field position, but they fumbled the ball and we just recovered it on the kickoff. What an absolute miracle of a play for the Condors here. So we get the ball back right after scoring and we'll see. Can we get it to LeBlanc? He's got a couple of blocks and he's got another 11 or so yards. I was absolutely not expecting anything from the, uh, the kick coverage there and they came up huge. As much as I want to avoid it, we will need to pass a little bit with Peterman. And he's got Ty Williams for a first and goal, but with a flag down. Is this going to be a holding? Perfect. A face mask to make it a little bit easier for LeBlanc. So from the two, we'll see if John can get his second rushing touchdown of the day. He's got the blocking, and he could have just strolled into that one. 14 all now, just like that. The great news about all that is it allowed our defense a little bit more time to rest, Ben. This is going to be a running game as far as I can tell. They will hand it off again, and we, you know, we've been blitzing, but it's just not enough. Lindsay, nine carries for 70 yards. Another run and another first down for Denver. 4.15 to go in the half. First and 10. Another handoff, and that time we should have hit him in the backfield. There's the sack that time. We bring the strong safety on the blitz, and it's third and long. Didn't mean to bring this pressure. We will give up some passing yards, but we'll get the fourth down, and I'm like Kyle Shanahan. We're going to take a timeout here before halftime. I 
gotta tell you, as a Niners fan, I'm absolutely crushed by uh, seeing another one of my teams lose again in a championship game. With two and a half minutes to go, we're going to try and pass a little bit. They brought pressure. Renfro is going to do a decent job getting some yardage, but we got to make sure that we're continuing to move the football. So um, seeing what we can do to find guys open, we'll make an audible and is that Renfro open again. I like it a lot. Two minute warning. We'll go ahead and stop the clock for us. And oh. We had Nelson open, but Peterman missed him. Trying to continue to pass. Peterman has Williams, and Ty Williams off to the races. I think he might score here. Wow. Big plays so far for the Condors today. Ty Williams, the Western Oregon graduate, a former class mate of mine, is going to give us the lead. So far, Peterman hasn't looked too bad. In the passing game is we are just going to try to hold these guys uh, 75 yards through the air so far as they go with this hurry up. And hopefully we can prevent anything crazy. Dang, that hurts a little bit. Remember, the goal was to keep the Broncos to uh, under 200 yards passing. They're just now getting over to 100. Second and three, they're going to the air again and Trevathan gets a hit, but... One timeout left for Denver, and they're going to just go with a little dump off, so clock will be moving. It seems kind of like the uh, the Broncos might run out of time here. 27 seconds in one timeout, and they just use that timeout, so hopefully we can catch them out with 15 seconds here. Don't want to give up a uh, touchdown, but if we can prevent... Well, we can just do that. <laughs> let's let's try to return it. Why not? Trevathan with another user pick. And you know me with eight seconds to go. We're going to try a little bit of something. Or we can just take a sack and uh, let's go to the half. Let's not risk a safety here. Von Miller just absolutely destroyed us there. Thankfully, we can go to the half. We don't have to have that terrible field position and we can go into the locker room up 21-14. We have given up 128 passing yards, um, but we get the ball to start the third quarter, and I think we might start to burn the clock out a little bit. For a guy who's only 25, it's super useful still to get that dev trade upgrade, so we're going to be running the ball a lot here and hoping to get that. The biggest problem here is going to be uh, too big a plays, I think. LeBlanc, man, he's having a game so far. Two touchdowns and... Uh, with a decent run here, yeah, he'll be over 100 yards. My only hope for John is that we don't get him injured running him so much, but the blocking has been actually incredible. I gotta say, it's pretty hard to burn the clock when you're getting 10 yards per play. John here can't outrun his man and finally doesn't have a big one. We'll try to keep the defense honest here with a little pass, and wow, we are lucky because that was a bad throw from Peterman. I don't run these often, but we're going to try the screen. LeBlanc actually has a few guys to, to take him to that first down. Let's see if they give us the spot, though. Fourth and inches. Wow, that's a load of crap. I have no reason to think that with the way that we've been running, we won't be able to pick this up. So we will try to go for it on fourth and inches. And LeBlanc has the blocking. I don't think he got it, though. Didn't hit the gap right, and it's Denver ball. The best news is that we uh, burned a decent amount of time off the clock, but I'm not feeling too confident as <laughs> I don't know what Tyrod's doing there on first down. Second and 10. Now they're going to go to the air again. And we're just giving up dump off passes way too easily. It would be really bad for this team if we gave up passing yards the whole way down. They do go with a draw there, and that's going to get them quite a bit. And I got to admit, I haven't been too impressed with the uh, the defense so far today. They do have a takeaway at this point, but other than that, it feels like Denver's just moving the ball easily. Here the Broncos go to the air and find another first down. 151 yards passing for Tyrod Taylor. We're getting close to the end of the third quarter. This is going to be another pass. And he's going to scramble. Man, he takes off quick. 
Seems an awful lot like if there's nothing there immediately, Tyrod's gone, so... Maybe we can try to watch for that as that was a terrible throw and somehow we get to it with another pick for Trevathan. It's actually insane. So now for the third game in a row, Danny Trevathan has multiple interceptions on the game and here goes LeBlanc. Is this uh, touchdown number three? I don't think he has the speed, but it's a huge gain right there. And so we're on to the fourth quarter. Still have that touchdown lead. And we still have the Broncos under 200 yards passing, which is the two things that we really could hope for. We're going to try a little touch pass to Renfro on second and 13. He's got a couple of blocks, actually. Juke works, and that's a first down. And then some makes a man miss, and he's in for the touchdown. Okay, Hunter. Just like that, it's 33 yards into the end zone to double our lead at the start of the, uh, the fourth quarter. And all I can hope for now is to prevent them from passing. I was a step behind getting another pick. Trevathan with another nice pass breakup, but I wanted the interception, and I think that we should have been able to have it. Uh, flag down. This should be coming back, I think. So instead of giving up some passing yardage, it's now second and 20. And it honestly doesn't make me too, feel too good because they're just going to continue to keep passing. 160 yards now passing for... Taylor and it's third and 11 can we get the stop here and force them oh no that was on me they're going to get over 200 passing yards now just like that and it's a big first down as well we're gonna be bringing a lot of pressure now Conley <gasps> we might not need to worry about it that was a tackle for loss from Garyon so he might be <laughs> just fine at this point well, unless I read the game day goal wrong, it said that he only needed one tackle for loss or one sack or one pick, basically. And he now has a tackle for loss, so maybe I'm wrong about this, but I hope that the man from Ohio State should be now a star. And the best part of it all means that we can just play the game. We don't have to worry too much about what the Broncos are going to bring. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. And what are the... I'm really concerned about that play calling if they're going to run it on third and ten. Royce Freeman might be good, but he's not going to be that good against our defense. Here's going to be a pass. And, oh, I just totally gave that up, but what are they doing? Philip Lindsay had the catch and he had space to pick up the first down, but just started doing a little jig or something. Started dancing around before the line to gain, and it's not enough. So we get the ball. LeBlanc gets another nice carry. And at this point, I gotta think that the game should be over. They do have all their timeouts since, you know, we could have something bad happen, but we are going to be able to just burn the clock out here. Three and a half minutes now. LeBlanc's going to keep getting these carries, dude. He is uh, turned into a workhorse today. And with only seven yards to go until he gets to 200 on the day, we're going to continue to feed him here, hoping for the best. Yeah. That's a fumble. That's what I was hoping wouldn't happen. And all right. Still got a little bit of a game here. Denver gets the ball back. Let's try to get another turnover, huh? Defense. Trevathan could use another interception. Gary on another nice tackle there. They're going to go to the air again. And how? This game just cheated me. It slowed me down instead of letting me get the interception. They, it was incomplete, but there's zero reason that I shouldn't have got to that. It literally slowed me down. At least we get a nice hit stick there. Fourth and eight. We're going to see what they can get out of this. I got AB coming into my zone, maybe. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just gave that up. I just gave them a free touchdown by not covering him. LeBlanc still in. Gonna continue to give him the ball, and uh, now we're at the two-minute warning. A couple of first downs would seal the game. LeBlanc, oh my gosh, he had some blocking. He almost had a touchdown there. First timeout taken for the Broncos. We've got a third down, which means we kind of have to pass. That was a really risky one. Renfro will come down with it, but it's short of the first down. Unfortunately, it means that we have to punt the ball away. And we're going to give them the ball one timeout and under two minutes to go. We'll see. Coverage could be good here. That seems like, oh my gosh, that was a terrible punt. Absolutely awful. They get the ball near midfield. 
Well, let's see if the game wants to screw me out of a pick again. First down, they're gonna run a draw. That's a terrible decision. I don't know how he's still on his feet, but the clock will be moving and the Broncos are forced to go into the hurry up and throw a, just a bad throw there. Minute and 25 on the clock. And they're gonna find AB for a first down. We might be in trouble if this game ends up in overtime as, wow, what a catch through the contact. Not having Bass has certainly made our, our entire offense one-dimensional. Oh, uh, why are the, why, why, why? Well, in three games now, Trevathan has eight interceptions. If that's not ridiculous, I don't know what is. No timeouts left for the Broncos means we can basically run two more plays and be out of here. And on the final play of the game, I'm going to let LeBlanc try to take off. No, nothing doing, but clock's going to hit triple zeros anyway. We survive without our starting rookie quarterback. We might have finished the dev trade upgrade for one of our corners, and we should have a star at that position now. And LeBlanc had himself a game. Never mind the fumble. It's still impressive. Also, a little side note, Danny Traveth and three more interceptions. We are absolutely dominant in takeaways this season. Um, but on offense right now, Nathan Peterman ends up going 7 of 10 for two touchdowns and no picks, which honestly isn't too terrible, although his misses were pretty bad. LeBlanc, 22 carries, uh, those negative plays at the end. Pulled him away from the 200-yard mark, but still a respectable 8.4 average and two touchdowns on top of that. Receiving-wise, Renfro and Williams both get themselves touchdowns with a respectable amount of yards between the two of them. And on defense, Jonathan Hankins and Carl Joseph pick up some sacks, while Danny Trevathan gets three interceptions. And on the kick return team, Jonathan Abram picks up a forced fumble. Gary and Conley is now a star dev trait guy, which means he's going to get some XP. But freaking Daryl Bass is out for five weeks with that pulled groin. We've got a lot of cap space. I think I'm going to have to go and find a new quarterback to replace Peterman. And to try and save ourselves a little bit, we are going to sign Brett Hundley, the free agent. He's got decent passing stats, and he's pretty damn quick. So he's not the greatest quarterback in the league. Number 47th ranked, not terrible. But one thing's for sure, he should be better than Peterman. And for the third week in a row, Danny Trevathan is the AFC Defensive Player of the Week. It's actually incredible. Six tackles, two picks, week one. Seven tackles, three picks, week two. And nine tackles, three picks, week three. It's actually insane. But that's going to do it for this week's episode. We've got some big stuff to do in the uh, the next week. we got a couple of negotiations to do. We've got some upgrades, and we've got a game against the 1-2 Saints at home. So there's honestly a pretty good chance that we start this season 4-0. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want to watch more, feel free to subscribe or maybe head on over to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash poonmaster69 where you'll find some more Madden, some NCAA football, and a few other weird stuff here and there, some GeoGuessr, some Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's all fun. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Poonmaster. You guys are the Thunderbirds. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.